Morning guys, uh, Sunday morning. I push this outside. I don't like to fire it up in here because of all the exhaust fumes. So I usually push it out and then fire it up. But I'm gonna do a little cold start. I, uh, it's been quite a while since it's been started. I usually have to pump the crap out of it to get going here. So we'll see how it goes. I think it has a really good battery. There it goes. I got this little throttle deal here that I can pull out. It's manual. And it keeps it idled up so it'll. Once I get it a little bit warmed up, then I can come back and kick it off and it'll idle fine. So. Runs good though. Pretty nice day out today. Uh, looking at probably 50 degrees right now. It's supposed to get up to closer to 60, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna shut this door, let this warm up. It had run a few days, so I'm gonna let it idle. Let that idle out there for a little bit. Uh, Got to tell you guys, I really, really let me, let me mute this. I really appreciate all the comments on this car. Uh, very, very helpful. A lot of guys sent links, um, and so I'm still kind of in the process of figuring out. I'm pretty sure I'm going with the four link. Uh, I'm definitely mini tubbing it. I haven't figured out whose mini tub I want to use or if I want a mini tub Try to do it myself For 450 bucks is what the DSC tubs uh, and they come with templates and everything like that That seems like for me uh, Just almost a no-brainer um, I think I can fit 335 tires under it with that DST DSC tubs in the four link I'm trying to find a four link that'll work with the DSC tubs I know they've got, you've got Ride Tech, you've got Heights, you've got TCI, you've got all these different ones. Well, TCI, they don't work with it unless you buy a specific one, which is like 2,300 bucks. Um, and so I'm not real sure. I know I'm gonna, if I use the DSE tubs, I'm probably gonna use the DSE subframe connectors, which they weld through the floor. Uh, Basically, it'll weld up through here and then connect into to those and weld onto those. The only problem I have with that is what if sometime in the future I want to put a different subframe under, say I want to, you know, I buy a TCI or I buy heights or whatever and I want to use a heights front end subframe, then I got to cut all that weld and stuff back out. And, so I don't know, but that's later on down the road. So, um, yeah. Got the old ladder bars underneath here, or ladder bars, old uh, traction bars. Um, I'm looking at maybe a, a curry rear end. Um, looks like I can get one of those for about right around two grand with a nine inch and the whole deal. And uh, that seems pretty reasonable, I guess, from what I've seen. That comes with curry axles and everything else. So. You know, I'm gonna end up with about four or five grand in this rear end before it's all done, probably, but, um, you know, obviously your rear end's pretty important as far as, you know, you get some horsepower behind it and you start tearing stuff up, axles break, you know, stuff like that, so, uh, yeah. All right, guys, well, um, I'm gonna crank this thing back down real quick. That ought to be enough. Yeah. It runs pretty good. That new brake setup I did back here made a big difference. Now I got some uh, emergency brake back here where I can uh, actually lock it down if I need to. It's sitting on a hill or whatever. Pretty nice.
All right, guys, uh, now I'm just rambling, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little cleanup today. I'm going to try to maybe clean this bench up here so I can use it. I've, that just become a junk bench, so I need to get that hooked up. Uh, no progress on this because I still have to get the o, other O-rings that uh, go on that little deal, which I've got in my truck, and I have to wait till Monday to get to tomorrow to get those. Um, All right, guys. Uh, little clean up there I've been needing to do that for a long time but uh, yeah I got my everything back to you guys remember the little arbor press that's my machine shop there you know pretty close to Ramsey's customs and having a machine shop um, and then that's the you know that and then I've got this thing right here and uh, so yeah I'm, I'm real close to him matter of fact I've got uh, I got a drill press here um, you know, it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, I think it was in a fire or something, but you know, just just a little polish on that, fix that up, and then I'll have uh, a press as good as Ramsey's Customs or uh, Old Barn Homestead. So, a um, little planer, got a little planer here. Uh, you know, it's it's not in bad shape. I mean, it at least needs a little love, but so yeah, my machine shop uh, has come along pretty good. So. Um, yeah, but anyway, I got this cleaned up, and uh, I got some workspace. This has always bothered me, not having a, this is actually backwards. If you could see all the way through that, you can see in there, the doors are on the other side. Well, they're real nice doors and everything, but they won't fit this side. Well, I like this because I could get to all the stuff that I had, you know, my cans and stuff like that. Um, so I spun it that way. Well, now I'm thinking, I may run up to Home Depot and buy me some some sort of wood, you know, some make some colors. doors for this. That way, because you can see all the dust and stuff that lands and gets all in here. Uh, and as you know, I cover this with a piece of plastic when I'm painting. But it'd be nice to have something that has doors on it. So I'm not sure if I want to just get two big doors or if I want to actually just do four, which. Uh, I'll probably decide that once I get, uh, let's measure that out. I don't know, that's eight foot by probably four foot piece is probably what I'll end up anyway, with. Anyway, uh, yeah, my old roller, walker roller car, uh, you know, I did that years back and I love it, still love it, but I don't use it and it takes up a lot of real estate. Um, that's old first mechanical jack type deal, has no hydraulics, it's all mechanical and it really works nice. It's really cool. But, uh, I, I did it for more for looks than anything. It's just a kind of piece of history. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, it's been buried under all the other junk. So, all right, guys, I may go run to Home Depot and do me a little wood making project. Um, it'll be similar to what Old Barn Homestead does. I mean, you know, my quality of work will be, especially with the machine shop I have, you know, here at the start of it, uh, I'll really be able to put some fancy doors on this, I bet. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll see you guys. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to Mr. Fireman's Wood Shop. Um, this is uh, my table where I do all my woodwork. And um, so, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. I've got the measurements going. Uh, I got 30 inches high. Mark 30 on both sides here. And I'll start cutting my cutting my doors out. 30 and 30. Pop a chalk line. All right, we got some cut line there. get to cut this is uh this is my high dollar saw um, you know, when you get a nice wood shop like I have you only get the best so if I can remember how to use this thing there it goes So 
see if I can cut a straight line. Uh, it's doubtful, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, uh, showed you guys my badass uh, grill here, but I'm going to, uh, I only use this on special occasions because, you know, I mean, it's, this is just doing a little quickie deal. If I was going to do something, you know, real good, I would probably use that one. But since, I'm, you know, this is just a little quick throw some doors on this thing. Uh, so I marked my spots where my hardware is going to go. Basically put it there, marked out my lines. And uh, then took me a little deal here and just got me a little center hole. Uh, I know this is for metal, but it worked. So and I've got this set up to where, you know, I don't go too deep here. And I'm just going to countersink my holes here for my hardware. That way it doesn't split the wood on me. But all you hardcore woodworkers, you probably already know that, so... This is nothing new. Alright. We there. So now we'll swap this out real quick. Hopefully my battery doesn't go to crap on me. Alright. And then we got our little hinges here. I measured those out, space them out about four inches from the bottom and the top. I don't know if there's a you know a particular spacing for these necessarily, but uh, that's what I did and we'll see if it works. So we've got a little holes there. Kind of run that in. down. Ugh. Got you in the right spot. Other hands. See what we got here. See how that worked out for me. Uh, let's see. Yep. This way, get out of the way. So, got me a line scribe there to where that'll be the top. And all we gotta do is mark that out. And zip those down. Of course, I ought to sand this and get it. And, uh, you gotta have both doors on each side like that. 
And uh, I'll bring you guys back when I get uh, get this done. I'm sure you don't want to sit and watch me do that again. But uh, you know, you real woodworkers out there, don't hate me because you ain't me. Um, I, you know, I, it takes a lot of years to to be able to get this good at woodworking. But uh, you know, if you stay with it, you'll you'll get there. So you know, uh, just just stay with it. Be positive. All right, guys. Also, I was going to show you this. So, yeah, when you're buying your wood, uh, you know, really just take your time and, and pick some really nice wood. This is Ecuadorian wood, as you can see. Uh, so, you know, this is really, really good stuff. I mean, it comes straight out of the woods of Ecuador. So, um, you know, when you're looking at your wood and stuff, make sure, you know, you like the grain, everything looks good. And, and really, if you can afford it, I know, I know it's high dollar stuff, uh, but, but get the stuff that's, that's Ecuadorian. So I just thought I'd throw that in real quick. I've got this done. Uh, I'm getting ready to, to mount them up. And then, of course, I've got my hardware here uh, for the door handles. And uh, we'll have one side done, and i got to go cut the other side, and we'll be wrapping her up. See ya. All right, guys. Uh, when you're woodworking, sometimes you're going to run into some problems, and I uh, just did. So um, I wasn't going to break this tool out. It's a very precision tool. Um, and so, but I'm going to, you know, give you guys a, a shot at it real quick. I mean, when you're using these tools, be very careful because they are, uh, you know, extremely precision. And so, as you can see here, as I open the door, it runs into my vise where I run the bolt through. So, uh, you know, this is another machine tool that I have. It's a, it's a sawzall. These are, you know, really, really, uh, uh, you can see the blades there, just precision. So, you know, just be careful with these when you use them. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and knock this bolt off here. You notice the precision of that cut is like second to none. Um, and now, now we have the clearance that we needed to open the cabinet all the way. Now I can finish putting uh, the other handle on this side. All right, guys, I'll bring you back, all right, guys. So there's the before, and there's the after. Uh, and I got to do the other side still, but uh, I want to just kind of show you what what we got going on. And um, this here, this helps too. Get you some Diet Mountain Dew. That gets you all hopped up for you know this this kind of work. And uh, so yeah, there's the there's the little handles on it. Everything works like it's supposed to. Um, pretty happy with that. Um, you know, and don't be afraid to try this at home. I mean, you do need a machine shop. Um, it, it, you know, and that just takes time. I mean, you'll get you'll get to where you've you know got all these specialized tools like this, and uh, then before you know it, you'll be making cabinets, man. You could probably even start your own cabinet right, guys, shop. Guys, finished product. Um, you know, and I didn't. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I could I could stain it or you know do something like that, and make it fancy. But you know, I'm afraid that if I start doing stuff like that. Um, it's probably going to intimidate Gary at Ramsey Customs, and he probably just quit making, you know, this industrial furniture altogether. And uh, I'm not about that. I'm not trying, you know, I'm not trying to do that to somebody. So um, I'm just going to leave it like this and not go any further with it, um, you know, so that nobody's feelings are hurt. So um, there you go. Um, it'll serve its purpose. I appreciate you guys watching and subscribing. And uh, if you guys don't know that I'm kidding at this point, then uh, you're dumber than a box of rocks. So, uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'm completely kidding. Uh, trying to be my, my, my humor, I guess, if you could say. So, all right, then uh, we'll talk to you later. See you.